most children can breathe without having to think about it. They don't have to worry about their lungs getting enough air. But for some children, the reality looks different. They are suffering from asthma bronchiale, the most common chronic disease to begin in childhood. The main feature of this disease is the inflammation of the respiratory tract. Lung function tests have to be carried out on a regular basis to measure how much air the affected lungs can still hold and how quickly air can move in and out of the lungs. These tests are used to determine the severity of the asthmatic condition. The acute form of asthma, an asthma attack, can be caused by irritants such as allergens or chemical substances when they find their way into the sensitive respiratory tract. Now the muscles around the airways contract. The inflamed mucous membranes in the respiratory tract swell and narrow the airways, resulting in increased mucus production. The bronchial constrictions and the excess of mucus can lead to wheezing during exhalation, coughing fits and even to a life-threatening lack of oxygen. For a physician, it is a complex task to diagnose and treat asthma bronchiale. The asthma episode of the patient could have been brought on by a viral infection like the flu. But it could also have started in combination with allergic reactions. So for scientists, there are still questions to answer. For example, is asthma a disease in its own right, or is it a combination of several diseases? Researchers have already known for some time that environmental factors play a significant part in the development of asthma bronchiale. The results of their latest studies show that some children who grow up on farms are less likely to develop asthma than other children. But what is it in this particular environment that seems to provide this protection? We thought that being in a barn like this one or being in a stable, what children do there is they breathe there. And since we see that the protective effect is on respiratory allergies, meaning hay fever, allergies of the nose, and asthma, allergies of the lower respiratory tract, we thought it might be inhalable particles. And dust is something, I mean, you can see it here, that's in the air and that is breathed in. And this is why we decided to go for dust. So it appears that it was in the barn or the cow shed that researchers were likely to make important discoveries. Dust samples had to be collected. What could be so special about the dust from the barn or the cow shed that it might offer protection against asthma? Important answers were found in an animal model system. Asthma attacks were triggered in these mice. However, when the mice inhaled spray made of dust from the cow shed beforehand, this didn't happen the asthma attack failed to occur. A whole series of lung capacity and blood tests were carried out. The results suggested that, in the case of mice at least, there are positive substances in the dust that seem to prevent the development of allergic bronchial infections, as well as asthmatic reactions. Which, though, of the many elements in the dust from the cow shed could also be important for asthma patients? Scientists are investigating this question. But one thing is certain, a farm environment will continue to provide important answers as to why some children are less likely to develop asthma. But asthma research is not only about environmental influences. Genetics is just as important. By making use of genetic screening, scientists are trying to discover which genes could be linked to a predisposition for asthma. With what is called microarray technology, small pieces of DNA from the chromosomes of both asthmatics and non-asthmatics were analyzed. Scientists wanted to know if the DNA sequences of both groups were identical or if differences could be found. For example, in the sequence of the nucleotides A, C, G and T. Researchers discovered that asthma patients had changes in single nucleotides. These were located mostly on the chromosome 17. As the entire human genome has already been sequenced, it was not difficult to find the location of these changes, namely in the so-called ORMDL3 gene. It's actually the strongest effect that anyone has detected so far. Uh, and if you have the copies of the gene or the 
forms of the gene which are associated with asthma, then uh, it increases the risk by about 60 or 70 percent. So it has a much stronger effect than genes which have previously uh, been identified, but it's still only one part of a complicated picture. Nevertheless, with genetic studies, it was possible to show that small changes in gene sequences can considerably increase the likelihood of a human being developing asthma. Scientists now know a new, important gene linked to the development of asthma. However, its function awaits further studies. Environmental and genetic factors have thus been shown to influence the development of asthma in children. It is their interaction that will now need to be looked at more closely. Because breathing freely and playing without limitations should be possible for all children.